And do you know what it is? Like, I, I find the most pernicious and most unacceptable type of feminist as a Muslim feminist. Do you know why? Oh. Because a, a true feminist, like of a second wave complexion or uh, background orientation, she would, everything's 50-50, domestic housework is 50-50, true. yeah? True. And also mm -hmm. finances are 50-50. X, Y, Z is 50-50, yeah? Everything is, that is what the ideology says. Yeah, Ngozi, yeah. who wrote the Feminist Manifesto, said everything should be equal except for breastfeeding. And she gave that only, there's the only exception in her little pamphlet book that she wrote, which is yeah. not really an academic mm. book anyway, but it's popular. So she, she, the, everything should be 50-50, no problem. If everything is 50-50, which means I'm not going to be putting, extracting half of my resources for you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save money. I don't need to do this. I don't need to protect you. In fact, protection is 50-50. If someone comes in a burglar, I don't need to protect, so on. All that stuff is 50-50. <laughs> So if I'm if I'm of a feminist, I would rather be Uqsum Billah al Azim, yeah. Put in religious put if we're just talking just based on the 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 the, the uh, domesticity or lack thereof or the interactivity or uh, domestic interactivity and transactional nature of the domestic environment between man and woman, I would rather be with a feminist than I would be with a Muslim feminist. Why like a Christian? I'd rather be with a Christian feminist or something. Why? Because at least she has a sense of consist self-consistency. Everything is 50-50. Mm. But the Muslim feminist, she wants to take the resources, which means she wants to not make it 50-50 when it comes to finances and work and Never. protection. <laughs> yeah. Plus, mm. so she wants to take all of the things her enti Islamic entitlements, plus she wants to have her feministic entitlements. Mm. So she wants a double entitlement. Yes. That woman is a leech. Mm. That woman is just a leech. And she needs to be called out in the community. People mm. like yourself mm. need to say, listen, don't leech off the man. You choose what you want to be. You want to be a Muslim? This is Islam. Uh, you know, mm. this feminism is different. And you can't yeah. mix in. If you, you want to be yeah. both, then you're going to end up being a leech. Uh, charity. Yeah. You're a charity. You are a charity. You might as well go to Oxfam and put your hands out like this. This is what you should do. With all due respect. I'm sorry. I'm going. Uh, but this, the, the entitled nature of some people that want both. If you, uh, if you want 50-50, then you have to provide 50-50. Right, you know, right. Do you, do you see the point here? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally get your point. And I think it's interesting. It's just anecdotally, again, um, the, the, the experience of, of brothers kind of on these matrimonial apps, etc., is pretty much what you're saying. So I'm, I'm hearing again and again about sisters who want the traditional benefits, exactly but don't want the traditional responsibilities allahu akbar this is beautiful so they want the traditional you said what benefits. i was trying to say for like four or five minutes you said it in like <laughs> one sentence they yes. want the traditional benefits but they do not want the traditional responsibilities yes. Yes. they don't want that role mm. so a sister will say islamically you have to provide for me you have to pay off my car you have to do this you know i i like this i like this i like that financially and if you can't provide financially this conversation is over Okay, it's over. It doesn't matter. The sister can be, she's got three kids, she could be 45 years old. And I know, you know, people don't like this, but some of us, and I'm going to say us, because I'm not pointing fingers here, I'm looking in the mirror. Okay, mm -hmm. I want people to understand that. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, I'm looking in the mirror. And I'm very well aware that some people, mashallah, at certain stages of life, Allah's blessed them with certain things where, mashallah, they, they can make demands and people fall over themselves to fulfill those demands, mashallah, because they're, they're, they're highly sought after, they're highly prized, right? If you're a sister who is older, you have children or you've been divorced, whatever the case may be, right? You don't want to have any more kids, okay? Uh, you, you, you've got your, and the thing is, what I've also found is with us as women, the older we get, the more life experience we've had, the more we've been married, the more we've had children, the more demanding we become, not the less, the more demanding we become. So by the time you're 35 and on your second marriage or you're 40 and you want to find a third husband, your list of what you want and what you won't put up with, et cetera, is very long now because you've been, you've experienced certain things. You came out of the first marriage. You're like, well, I don't want that again. Now that's new things added to your list. That the no, next but time you know, I'm going to make you know sure this is it more of a, um, is it more of a negative thing rather than it is an affirmative thing? Like maybe you, it could be. It could be. I don't want this. I don't want this. Rather yeah, than I want yeah, this. Yeah, it could be that. It could, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to go for that kind of guy. Da, da, da. But I think the point that I'm making anyway, Basraha, mm. is um, aside from all of that, because maybe somebody will hear this and say, "Well, that's not me. You know, I'm not like that. I don't know anybody like that," which is fair enough. 
the point that I'm making is while you, sis, are making all those demands, those Islamic, very Islamic demands, traditional demands on this yeah. man, you're saying out of your mouth, I don't cook, I don't clean, um, uh, I'm not going to obey, I don't wear hijab. Yeah, I forget don't it. If, I mean, who, if, you might as well just say, whatever, go marry uh, my sister or but, something. But, you, yeah. but this, is, this is for me why I'm having this conversation and trying mm. to have this conversation, inshallah, with sisters is this is where the realism comes in. This is where the pragmatism comes in. Mm. This is where you can't have the traditional benefits without the traditional role. If you want a man to perform the traditional function, guess what he's looking for? A woman who's going to perform her traditional function. So you don't have to go for a traditional man. That's your choice. But if you want the traditional man and the benefits that come with that, you need to somehow get okay with the idea of being the traditional wife. Because being a traditional wife, it looks a certain way, just like a traditional husband looks a certain way. No one's forcing you to, to go that route. It's up to you. It's your choice. But you can't have both. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, you, you don't get to tell me to do this. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not going to let a man tell me to do that. But you have yeah. to pay my bills, though, because Islam yeah, says. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But Naima, the same woman, or maybe sometimes, this is an archetypal woman, right? It's, we're not talking about a woman. But the same archetypal type of woman we're talking about here, she will, uh, she will easily bow at the knee when it comes to her white uh, uh, boss uh, at McDonald's or whatever she's working or in the car wash or uh, I don't know where, where she works, anywhere she may work, in the cleaning, cleaning place. Or it could be in the office where she has to even flirt with the man a little bit and to, to get what she wants. So she, she, it's contextual. It's not about, oh, I, I don't I believe in obedience. You do believe in obedience. Every single society and structure works on a type of hierarchy. You know, we as Muslims, we, are, we believe in a complementarity between man and woman. We don't believe in an equality between them. We, we believe in a hierarchical managerial structure, just as you would expect if you went and worked in a secondary school. I, was, I worked in many secondary schools. The expectation is, is actually quite sometimes disturbing. You come in, the head teacher mm. comes in, and all the women are going around him like, sorry, uh, concubines around the, you know, something you know you think what, what the hell like you know every little word she says scared the same woman she's yeah. the biggest feminist when she goes home yeah. this is uh, yeah it's, it's it actually boils my blood especially when it comes from the muslim community like oh you're what your yeah. husband you're lying with him at home but when you go to your know, place at work you know the man can tell you what he wants whatever you do yeah yeah, yeah but he's paying me but he's it's the same transactional kind of thing but wow. he's yeah. paying, you're getting all these benefits as well from the man. In fact, he's willing to do much, your husband is more for much you. more for you, right? Yeah, so I feel like it's just it is actually wholesale acceptance without resistance. These ideologies of the West, which position a woman as only uh, acceptable or um, you know even viable as a as a subject mm. uh, if she's in the work environment, and that's what the only mm. context where obedience makes sense, but. Yeah. Like, Warhol Farron says something really good in his book, you know. He's got a book called The Myth of Male Power. And he mm -hmm. also got Boy Crisis. Oh yes, I've heard of that. Yeah, is is where, where he taught his recent book, but the, the classic book that he wrote is called The Myth of Male Power. And in that book, he basically he he gives the example of a woman who works in a corporate environment, yeah? And he he says what would a, like this archetypal woman, what would she think if she's now in charge of more people? Would she think that that's an expansion of her power or influence? Mm. Or would she think that it's less power and influence? He says he, she would think that it's an expansion of her power and influence. Mm -hmm. But when she goes home and she has more kids, she, she sees that as more of a burden. She's encumbered mm. with those children. She's burdened with mm. them. Yeah. But, it's, but she has more influence on the children and will have more influence on those yeah. children than mm, she so could or ever will have influence on those employees. It's yeah. the same paradigm, but different environment. The moment it moves into the domestic environment, the, yeah. the, the moment drudgery starts to appear, this domestic drudgery uh, starts to appear and becomes uh, the prevailing narrative theme. As you said, mm -hmm. uh, you know, honestly, mm -hmm. it's just like mm -hmm. if, if it's in this context, it's oppression. If it's in this context, it's professionalism. Yeah. You see how they change the words. You're, yeah. you're being professional, professional when you're listening to your boss, but you are, uh, you are a slave Oppressed. At home when you're in the house yeah. and uh, listening to the hierarchy mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And it's just, it's a play on lexicon and they've been able to dupe half of the population so they can pull them out of home so that they can stimulate their economies. And, yeah. and, and quite frankly, they, men are the biggest beneficiaries of this ideology. True. 
I, I was just true. I one hundred percent, one hundred percent agree with you. I I agree yeah. because you know the the anyway. Alhamdulillah, I think the the steep decline that you know we've seen in terms of you know sexual morality since the sixties. Um, I think our dean has managed to 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 shield us from the worst of that. Obviously, in Muslim countries, there is a slow burn, um, but for lots of different reasons, it just hasn't been you know, sort of a steep downward, whatever, as it is in the West. But, 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 but even if we are not having, you know, partners before marriage, if, even if we're not kind of having hot girl summer and all of that kind of thing, the ideas are all around us. And that's why I think it's really important to have these open conversations and really get young men and women to examine the, the forces around them and examine the ideas that they're surrounded by and, and learn more about their Islamic grounding so that they have an effective filter for those ideas that are around us. On this Otherwise, point, we're just going to go the way, the way of the people who went before. We're just going to follow them like a lizard in a hole. You're right. To finalize this discussion, it's been a pleasure talking to you, by the way. And Allah has been very, very fruitful. Uh, and I thank you so much for Allah, your insights. They have been good and you've articulated yourself very well. I'm going to steal some of your articulations and repackage them my own way. Traditional roles, traditional Fair responsibilities, enough. you know, it's, uh, it's there. You, you, you have the gift of... Uh, of being able to to summarize things but i was going to ask you this question which is a parting advice now for muslim men a muslim woman young let's say call them millennials call them whatever you want starting up yeah this this channel the demographic of it maybe 18 to 35 18 to 45 that's the kind of major age group there so a lot of men a lot of women are going to start up families and stuff like that what advice would you give a young man? Let's start with the man, right? Advice you would give based on your extensive experience mm. in the community and your own life experience on how to, what to look out for. What are the blind spots? What should we do? What should we look out for? Mm. A young man mm. starting up and the same advice for a young woman. So the first thing that I would say is echoing what we said before, which is to get your grounding in your dean. The second thing I would say is pay attention to your mental health and make sure that you are, are healthy, mind, body, soul. Because a healthy person moving forward in life into a partnership with another healthy person, what do you have? You have a healthy marriage. So that advice is for both, is to learn your dean and get healthy. And I mean that holistically, mind, body, and soul, get healthy. If you're struggling, get help. If you are confused, get help. You know, don't think that a marriage or a husband or a wife is going to solve any issues that you have, any, anything that you're carrying with you. You don't want to take that into a marriage, right? You've got any addictions, anything like that. And I say this because this generation, it seems to be, is the mentally the most fragile generation that we've probably ever seen. You wow. know, this is yeah. the generation where we have, you know, just off the charts level of depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, self-harm, and Muslims have it too. We're not immune. If, mm -hmm. if where you're on Instagram and TikTok, halas, okay, it's, it's game over, right? So that's what I would say. The first thing, learn your dean and get healthy and choose a healthy partner. Understand what it means to be a wife, understand what it means to be a husband and actively learn and cultivate those qualities within you. Unfortunately, it's something that it's not really spoken about. What does it mean to be a wife? I was thinking to myself, if I was to do a video, for example, you know, are you wife material? I don't actually think that a lot of young people could even say what wife material is. You know what I mean? Husband material, I think people know kind of what husband material is. Okay, I need to provide and protect, you know, whatever. But wife material, I think a lot of people are confused because we've got our own way of valuing ourselves as women that has nothing to do with being a wife. And it has nothing to do with what men are looking for when they look for a wife, right? Uh, so, so these are some of the conversations to have with yourself. Main thing is be healthy, look for someone healthy to build with and make a commitment that is based on something bigger than yourselves. It's not just a pleasure thing. It's not just a fun thing. It's not just like a, a good time thing. It's not like TikTok. It's not like Pinterest. It's a commitment. And inshallah, Allah will bless you with joy and happiness and good times, but it will come at a cost. You will have mm -hmm. to sacrifice. You have to understand that and be prepared to do that, inshallah. And just make a decision to say, healthy children will come from me. You know, a healthy lineage is going to come from me and mine, inshallah. And I'm going to do everything in my power to ensure the health of my family unit and those who come up after me, inshallah. We have 10, 100, 
a thousand, fifty thousand people who've made that decision and are on that path. Subhanallah, look how it would affect our communities. Be a, it would change the game completely. Wallahu alam. Precious advice, and you've killed two birds with one stone with that advice. Can you tell us where we can see, so we'll read some of your books, or uh, where, where are you on social media, where we can see some of your kind of uh, videos or, or any programs that you're doing for young men, young women, women in particular? I know you do a lot of stuff. Where can we, where, where can we get that stuff? Uh, I'm on all the platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Naima B. Robert, and all my books are available on Amazon. Also just search Naima B. Robert, and you'll find all 25 of them there. Alhamdulillah fantastic mashallah you've done a great job and uh i really had a enjoyable and fruitful conversation with you hopefully we'll do it another time and um for those who are watching at home we've we have uh, kind of maybe you could argue diverted a little bit from the remit uh but a lot of these issues which have been discussed today really do affect the muslim community and they do need to be spoken about and i think uh, many, if not most, especially on this channel, would agree that Sister Naima has done a wonderful job in tackling those issues. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.